Hey, g'day, it's Prezzo here and welcome back to the shop. Today I want to talk about these uh, cheap Chinese inverters. This one is a Huan Yang inverter and I uh, bought this about two years ago and it's attached to my drill press. Uh, this drill press was a Taiwanese machine, it had a four speed belt drive and I was really keen on the idea of having an inf infinitely variable drive and when these Chinese inverters became available at a reasonable cost I thought well that's the way to go. Uh, the only problem is the internal fan on this thing is incredibly noisy. Uh, I'll just switch it on I'll give you an idea what I mean. So I've just switched that on now let's just wait and we're going to wait and wait and wait. It's booting up now and now it's ready for operation. And you can hear that fan, it, and it runs continuously. There appears to be no way of switching it off. Also, it's so noisy that I tend to switch the inverter off when I'm not using the drill. And as you know, you come backwards and forwards to a machine like this, and you want to quickly drill a hole or chamfer for something, and the, the weight while it boots up is, gets a bit annoying. So what I'm looking to do is finding a way of actually temporarily disabling the fan so that it only cuts in when it's needed and that is on a you know, really hot day if you're using the machine and you're running it quite hard then the heat sink is likely to get hot and that's when I want the fan to cut in. I read through the manual uh, as, as it is and uh, looked for a way of, of maybe having a function so you could turn that fan off. Couldn't find anything. I posted a, um, a question on a forum a lot of users got back to me and said that they didn't know any way either of disabling the fan through the software settings and a lot of people suggest that I fit some sort of a switch or um, a sensor or something to it so that I can override the fan when it's just idling. Now I've got another inverter over here which I'll show you and uh, then we'll come back to this one and see if we can modify it in the way that I suggested. Okay this is one of my other uh, inverter drives. This is an Invertec OptiDrive. I've got two of these. This one is on my manual mill. I've got another one on my CNC milling machine. This one I think is European, uh, certainly a lot more expensive than the Huan Yang. I think I paid about $280 for this uh, about five years ago. It's driving a one horsepower three phase motor and the thing about this is that when you switch it on it boots up in a matter of seconds so I'll just demonstrate all right and that's booted up and running now the other thing is that it's totally silent although there is a cooling fan on the heat sink at the back of this drive it only cuts in when the temperature rises sufficiently I can leave this running basically all day like that and uh, never hear a peep out of it if I drive the machine very hard, taking heavy cuts, yes the fan switches on but it switches off again when it cools down. So this doesn't annoy me, I can leave it like that, come backwards and forwards to the machine, it'll switch on immediately and off and also the manual is written in proper English and it's very easy to understand. Having said that, yes it's expensive and you would expect it to be a higher quality drive than the, the Huan Yang. However, I want to be able to get the Chinese drive to do what this one does and that is to only switch the fan on when necessary. Okay, so this is what I'm proposing. I've purchased a number of these uh, bimetallic thermal switches. These are all normally open so they will, uh, there will be no conduction of current through these until the temperature raises to the point it's shown on the label. I bought uh, four pair of these and the temperatures range from about 35 degrees C up to about 90 degrees C. I bought the, the 35 degrees C one and then I realised that good hot day in my workshop uh, it's up to 35 degrees centigrade so it's probably not going to be suitable. This one though is uh, pretty much what I want to use. It's uh, rated at 45 degrees C, normally open. It's got a pair of um, insulated leads on there and pretty much all I need to do is to fit this between the fan and the power supply for the fan and then attach this to the heatsink. So I did check these just to be sure that they're working and 
if I attach that to my meter. All right, so once again, normally open, so it shouldn't give me continuity through that switch at this stage. If I warm this up to 45 degrees C, you should be able to see that the bimetallic switch closes. So let's just check this. So there it goes. So I just use my heat gun just to bring the temperature up and if I put that on the cold welding table and just let the heat drain out of that, you can actually hear a click as the bimetallic uh, switch inside opens up again. There it goes. So I'm happy with that. That's sort of uh, I think 45 degrees C um, is going to be okay. Certainly that's not hot enough to damage anything in the drive. So let's see if we can get this little baby in the, the drive and see if we can improve things. Okay, well I've got the thing on the bench and I've had a quick look and unfortunately this particular drive has the heat sink fully enclosed inside the casing. And there are no screws that allows you to get this cover off the back of the drive. I was sort of hoping that you'd undo a few fasteners, pop that off, fit the sensor and attach that to the fan and the fan is here at the top it's a DC 24 volt fan and you wouldn't believe something that size could make so much noise but what I'll need to do is to just simply interrupt that wire there fit the switch in series and then attach the sensor somehow to the, the fins of the heatsink or the back of the heatsink Unfortunately, it's not going to be that simple and uh, I've already had a quick look and uh, it's going to mean a bit of uh, disassembly. So let's get stuck into that and if you've got a drive of this type, I might be able to save you a lot of head scratching. So just let me do this. I'm just going to rip this apart and we'll have a look at it on the inside. So there are four screws buried down here, two at the top, two at the bottom. And there's sort of like a multi-level circuit board in the way. So to get the, the front half of the drive off, you just need to disconnect this ribbon cable and pull that through. And this is basically the guts of the whole thing and like I say you would be hoping that that would just sort of pop out of there but it doesn't and the screws that hold it all together are underneath this top circuit board here and you just simply can't get at them unless you undo all of the screws holding the components to the heatsink the ones that actually generate all the heat so Although I'm a bit reluctant to do this, it looks like the only way that you can get at the heatsink itself. So there's a set of six screws going through this circuit board. And then they are clamping the, I'm guessing they're triax or SCRs, something like that, down to that heatsink. Let's loose. Okay, so that's sort of got me access to these four screws. So there's one there, one there, two on the other side. So I really don't want to disassemble this any more than I need to. And you can see the back of the heatsink just here. There's some thermal paste that attached a, a big rectifier to the heatsink. And uh, I could undo these four screws, there's two here, two on the other side, and probably lift a lot more of this out, but I'm starting to think that I don't want to. All I really need to do is somehow clamp that thermal switch to the back of the heatsink. 
So I'm going to make up a little um, clamp that will hold that on there. I've extended the, the wires on that, just by a couple of extra wires on the end because it's got to reach all the way from the heat sink up and around the board and then connect on to the, uh, the power wire for the fan. Also to hold it down to the heat sink I've made up a little stainless steel clip. That was the, the Mark 1 version. That's the, the Mark 2 improved version with the little hook on the end there so that the switch element is going to be held firmly in place and it won't be able to slip out. It's sort of sized in such a way that when it's screwed down tight it actually springs that against the, the heat sink and holds it there. Okay well the next step is going to be to drill a hole to hold that little clip there. I'm going to use a soft tapping screw and when I drill this hole you need to be a little bit mindful of the fact that there are some fins underneath this heat sink and I can't really see inside to be sure that I'm going to miss one of those fins but um, I had a bit of a poke around and a look inside and I think that if I put the drill hole just there I'll miss the fins. You also need to be a little bit aware that the, uh, the bridge rectifier screws down into this area here. You can see where the thermal paste used to be uh, so you're going to miss that area, don't drill anything in that area. And when this board's in place, uh, there's not a lot of space underneath there, but certainly there's enough for that little clip and the biometallic switch. So I'm going to go ahead and drill that hole and uh, I'm going to use a uh, vacuum cleaner to just suck up the swarf because I don't want any of that metallic material shorting out one of these boards. So I'm going to put some um, thermal paste on the back of this switch. Alright, that's okay, it's a bit crooked there but that's fine. I've just got to be able to miss this plastic shroud, I don't know why that's there. Uh, and I need to be able to miss the um, bridge rectifier when it screws down. Interestingly, there is on this side, I don't know if you can see that, but just in here, there is another sensor screwed down to the heat sink and it's in a uh, TO220 package, uh, two wires coming off that and I am guessing that that is the temperature sensor which is going to protect this thing if there's a, an overheating. So there's something in the software that will shut the drive down if it senses that um, any of the components are getting too hot and you would think you know it wouldn't have been too hard to actually just write into the software a little bit of code that says uh, don't turn the fan on unless the heat sink gets to you know say 50 degrees C but uh, unfortunately they didn't do that so we're sort of it's a bit annoying really we're doubling up on the technology here to get it to do something which should have been very simple so let's go ahead and get this all back together again let's hope it works So that's the, uh, the bridge rectifier screwed down and we've got to do the same for these other components and yesterday I said they're probably SCRs or MOSFETs or something, I think um, they're actually IGBTs. Don't know what they are but I understand it just from watching another video that's what they are. Okay, well that's not fully tightened up, I'll do that shortly. So I'm just going to route these wires through and uh, splice into one of these wires, one of these conductors to the fan, doesn't really matter which one, this is DC. So I'll go ahead and do that and then we'll put it all back together again and see if I've been successful.
Well, that's hardly military grade splicing, but it'll do. So I'm just going to put some heat shrink around these now and I can reconnect the fan. That's better. Okay, let's get this baby back together and see what happens. Alright, so there it is all back together. I'm going to put the 240 volt power back into this now and I'll run it on the bench. but. Funny thing is, I'm not going to know whether I've been successful or not. Um, well, obviously the fan won't work, but then I have to worry about is it going to cut in when it reaches the right temperature. Okay, so I've connected this back up to the single phase. Now this is 240 volt single phase, and according to the wiring diagram that came with the machine, uh, there are three terminals marked R, S and T the instruction manual, and if I read directly from it, it says uh, RST input current if the single phase source meets too willfully. So yes, I've been very willful in connecting my single phase. So let's, uh, let's boot this up, and in theory it should start, but we should not hear the fan. Alright, that's connected now, and we've got to wait while the capacitor is charged, so that's got power running to it now, no fan, and that's fully booted up and ready to go. So it seems that I've been successful, however, I might have just succeeded in breaking the fan, I don't know. Incidentally, uh, the reason why I embarked on this project was I watched a video by a YouTuber called Rolling Metal, and I'll put a card up so you can have a look but he was supplied with one of these Huan Yang inverters, or at least a very similar one to this, uh, by Banggood. And he did uh, a very good review. He, he didn't hold back, he sort of uh, looked at it and uh, pointed out all its faults and all its problems. And he too was trying very hard to work out how to switch this fan off, and I don't believe he succeeded in doing that. But what he did do is he uh, set this thing up on the bench and he ran it hard, he actually insulated the whole machine to try and induce it to overheat and uh, he was not able to get the temperature up very high even though it was running quite hard. So I, I suspect the fan is really just a fail safe, it's probably not needed for everyday use. Okay, well here's the drive back on the wall, it's all wired back up to the drill press and I can switch it on for you and verify that the fan is now silent. So let's just switch on, give it time to boot up, nearly there, and we're running it. So that's ready to, to run and as you can hear the fan is switched off. So I actually finished up the video at this point, I put it all together and I was just about to post it and then I thought, you know what? everybody's going to say you just broke the fan and that's all. So what I'm going to propose to do is to show you that the fan will still switch on at the 45 degrees centigrade that I was hoping for and it does indeed switch off again. Before I do that though I just want to talk about another way of quietening this drive or at least quietening the motor that it's running and that is by changing parameter number 41 which changes the carrier frequency that the drive operates at. Now once again this is not my doing, I saw this on uh, the video by Rolling Metal and he messed around with that setting and was able to significantly make his motor quieter. So I'm just going to demonstrate, this is what it sounded like at its default setting and I've taken the belt off the drilling machine so what you're going to hear is just the motor sound itself. So let's switch on. 
and there's, there's a high frequency whistle coming from the motor so it's not the spindle because I've taken the belt off and what I'll do now is we'll change that parameter to something higher so there's parameter 41 so we'll set that change from 4 and I'll take it up to 8 and let's run it again and there's a faint whistle still there but it's a lot better than it was so if you've got one of these drives and you get that horrible squealing sound from the motor just try changing that parameter and see if that makes a difference so this is it at 4 kilohertz and here it is now at 8 kilohertz much better I reckon okay so here's the setup I've got the drive booted up and ready to go I've got my stopwatch set up so in the screen so you can see it that'll give you an idea how long it's going to take to bring this heat sink up to the temperature that will switch the fan on the fans are stuck to the top of the drive there and I've got some tissue paper there so you can tell when the fan switches on again and uh, I struggle with this and try to figure out a way where I could actually artificially increase the temperature of the heat sink and I was thinking about all different ways you know trying to stall the motor or run the drive in a silly way in the end I thought you know what just get your heat gun and blow that straight down the back of the heat sink fins so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to come around the other side here we'll get this all running and then I'll slowly bring the temperature up I say slowly because I'm going to run the heat gun on its lowest setting because the last thing I'll do is burn the arse out of the case for my drive because uh, oh well that'd get me a few more likes though wouldn't it okay can everybody see I'm just going to start the timer okay here we go All right, well that took 3 minutes 42 seconds and as you can see the fans running now so I don't know I'm happy with that that's uh, at least proves that the switch works and when I tried this yesterday I put the fan back and it took about two minutes to bring the drive temperature down again Ooh. so I can feel the heat being pulled through there we'll just leave the timer running and just see when it switches off again okay well that's 7 minutes 26 seconds and uh, I don't know how efficient that fan is it certainly makes a lot of noise but um, I'm guessing that this thing is never going to switch that fan on not with the sort of use that I uh, put this drilling machine to Okay, well, I hope that's proved to you that I didn't break the drive. Uh, I didn't melt anything, so that's a success. And if you own one of these Fang Yang drives and you've got the type with the exposed uh, heatsink at the back, then you're in a much better position to do that modification. Those little thermostat switches only cost a couple of dollars each, and uh, it's a simple matter to make a little clamp and fit that to the fins. The fan if you, yours is like mine, it's just a flip up grill at the top there, it's easy to get at. So in my book that's a successful modification and uh, I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed watching. My workshop is now going to be much quieter so I can get back to listening to some thrash metal and some dubstep. So for now, thanks for watching.